everybody knows the Dark Knight. Be it through the cartoons or through the movies, you know his basic story. But if you follow the comics, a lot of things are left out. Some things are removed or ignored to give you exactly the image they want. So here are five things they don't want you to remember about the Dark Knight. Number 5, we got the bad credit card. The Tim Burton movies got us hooked. We got some great images about a dark superhero, but then people wanted it to be more child friendly. Enter Joe Schumacher and his movies. Oh, I think Batman should have a credit card of his own. Yeah, sure, Joe. The third movie was a success, even though a lot of fans were already saying that Batman got too childish. But the fourth one, nobody could swallow. It's a bad movie, and it makes sense that people want you to forget it. But the sheer amount of plot holes that are caused by this object was enough for it to become a meme by the hands of the nostalgia critic. A bad credit card of on number 4, The Bad Family. To create the story of the dark vigilante, people kinda relied on him working alone, so a lot of characters he encountered and became his allies are just taken out. In the last trilogy and the movies before it, we had two movies before we even mentioned Robin. Oh, but Fernando, everybody knows Robin. Yeah, but did you hear anything about Batgirl in the last trilogy? The fact of the matter is, the Bat family is quite extensive. Not only there are characters that are only used for one movie or one animation, there are characters that were never seen outside of the comics. A lot of people might not know, but the Batgirl everybody likes is the second version. There were a Batwoman and a Batgirl, but they were only stereotypical versions of Batman and Robin as females. The Batwoman was constantly captured. And of course, if I talk about the Bat family, I have to talk not only about the Bat Hound, but also about the Bat Cow. In a certain story, Batman saves the life of a cow and adopts it. Maybe for the Bat Milk? On number 3, Bat Shark Repellent. We're going to talk more about the series, but if you don't know it, all you need to understand is that people love this series and some still do. To the point that this TV series had a movie. A movie with a scenario everybody wants to see. A bunch of enemies go against Batman. But for whatever reason, there is a scene when Batman has to go against a shark. A rubber shark. With head trauma. So for minutes, he's being attacked by that shark until Robin brings him the bat shark repellent. Nobody took this as a good idea. If he had an inflatable Batman to distract the shark, it would make more sense. It would make more sense if Aquaman suddenly appeared for the first time, just to rescue him. At least I know Aquaman exists in the DC universe. I don't know if there is a shark repellent, especially not in a bug spray can. On number two, Batman kills. No, I'm not talking about those deaths where he just couldn't prevent it. I'm not talking about those enemies that just ended up down a cliff. There are a bunch of situations where Batman leaves people to die. In fact, there's this old comic in which he specifies to Robin they shouldn't kill using weapons. From around the same time, there's this one that shows him saying maybe this guy is better off dead. Over the years, this was taken away just to make it more acceptable. We'll talk about this more on number one, but before that, an honorable mention. I'm sure that some people saw the title of this top five and said, it's gotta be there, the killing joke. In this story, Barbara Gordon is shot by the Joker and loses the use of her legs. And then she's used as a hostage to try to make Commissioner Gordon crazy. The plan, of course, fails, but nobody likes seeing Batgirl being just thrown away. The Batgirl that had a job, that was a doctor. But a lot of people don't want you to forget about that story because that's where the Oracle comes from. The Oracle is the second superhero identity Barbara Gordon is going to have. She did a lot of research for Batman and other people. People. And she could kick ass even though she was in a wheelchair. But in number one, Batman was campy. After the Tim Burton movies, nobody really wanted to think of the campy Batman of the TV series. 
In fact, as I showed you, Batman started dark. But then there was the influence of this guy. Frederick Wirtman put out a book called The Seduction of the Innocent, in which he attacks mass media, one of which being comic books. He deliberately used people with mental problems and distorted information. For instance, saying that there was a character with no head, when in fact it was an invisible character. In fact, he was the one who started with Batman and Robin being gay and Wonder Woman being a lesbian and sadomasochist. Two years before that, homosexuality was not considered a mental disease. It was around that time that the battle that continues until today to show that homosexuality is natural started. But then because of all this, the comic books started to self-regulate. There was a very strict code. One of the rules, for instance, was that a criminal could not escape. He had to be caught by the end of the publication. So naturally, with a bunch of people ready to criticize, the stories became more campy. The campy Batman was the origin for the TV series, an attempt at getting more audience now that they are losing a bunch of people who like the original stories. And it's okay if you prefer the dark Batman or you like more the campy Batman, or to like both, as I do. But the fact of the matter is, the TV series was not a parody. It was very much a representation of how the stories went. But eventually, the people who wanted to evolve the character were in charge again. Never leave the cave without it. For a while. That's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And somebody please explain why the latest Batman is always hoarse. I'm in top physical shape! Except my throat. The Oracle is the second superhero identity that Barbara... Barbara? Oh, I think Batman should have a credit card of his own. Yeah, sure, Joe.